So today's agenda uh, from my side is three theoretical parts and one practical. I will begin a little bit uh, with my background. I will talk about myself. Then I will walk you through how I implemented my test-driven development framework with JavaScript. And after that, how I used my already written tests with uh, automation tools like TeamCity. And I will show you a little demo with uh, mocha testing and publicly available GitHub repository. So my background. Uh, recently, I have graduated from Konos University of Technology as I earned my bachelor's degree in software engineering. And now I'm studying informatics at Vilnius University. Uh, first programming experience was uh, related to web development. Uh, I was a full stack JavaScript web developer, mostly working with uh, React and Node.js. And this experience for me lasted for two years. I was working with e-commerce and fintech projects. My title was uh, not only full stack developer, but even a bit uh, DevOps flavor, uh, DevOps engineer. And here at Zenitech, I'm simply a software engineer, mostly working on front end solutions. Uh, so uh, the first major topic today for me is everyday test driven development or TDD. Uh, I have uh, divided it to five different parts. So motivation, why do I use it? Approach, how do I do it? frameworks that help me, uh, how do I set up test environments, and some other assisting tools like statical analysis stuff. Uh, for, for motivation side slide, uh, first and more, and uh, what uh, I have to say that I used to, to have my hands literally shaking when I had to deploy something on TeamCity, click that deploy button, or when I used to move uh, my ticket to ready for QA or for QA testing lane on Jira, I never was sure about my uh, my written uh, functionality uh, until it was assisted by test. Um, there are things like hard refactoring. When you don't have any tests, it's really hard to uh, improve your code base. Uh, you are always scared to break something and so on. You have to do a lot of manual testing. And really a uh, big disadvantage that most of the time turns down people from, test from testing is longer development time, which I personally cannot agree at all because even though we have to write a little bit more code uh, as tests add, but I believe that uh, this actually improves my development time and it's a really useful thing uh, considering uh, time span. Next up is approach. I think it's pretty classical test-driven development usage approach, the driven implementation approach. Um, so first of all, I like to write simple tests that test my API, uh, my integrational test, and I supply minimum amount of code required test to pass. I create an API controller with some uh, database queries that allows test to pass. Uh, when doing it, I find some corner cases and I support it with uh, more tests. I write more tests. Then I refactor my code uh, to be uh, easier maintainable, easier readable. I also like to configure pre-commit hooks when using version control system. Uh, I, in the past, I used uh, an Node.js library called Husky. It allows you to run some script uh, every time you are committing or pushing or pulling. and the last point of my test driven development approach is implementing automated uh, continuous integration. Uh, the frameworks I have used, it's a kind of a battle between opinionated and unopinionated frameworks or libraries. So it's actually this uh, left side is uh, opinionated frameworks, JS, Angular, NestJS. They provide you everything that you need for development. And we have stuff like Mocha, React, Express. And those things basically gives you only one thing. Like Mocha only provides you an extremely fast uh, runtime environment. And that's it. Just uh, provides you all the stub, clocks, functionality, and so on. So when using Mocha, as I'm going to demo for you today, uh, you have to use some additional libraries like Chai, Sinon, this Greek guy. Somehow, I don't know why he's Greek. Just uh, just a logo, and they really like this super test library uh, that helps me to test my Express APIs. And how do I prepare my mock dev test environment? 
for me is just one sentence to answer this. Use Docker as simple as that. Uh, just use Docker. How do I do it? I create a Docker compose file for test resources. Basically, if uh, my code base uh, is using MongoDB, my compose file will consist of, of one container that includes Mongo. If I need Redis for caching or ActiveMQ for messages sending, I will uh, improve my Docker compose file with those additional containers. Then I have to create a mock config. Uh, most of the times via environment variables or other configuration approaches, I make sure that Docker compose resources for tests are compatible, completely compatible with those that I use for development. Meaning at once I like to have running on my machine Mongo for development and Mongo for test, and they should not collide. And I love, and I think it's a must to avoid uh, using dev and test data base so you should never run your test on the development database or even production because uh, most of the time i like to and i have to clear clear database entirely i delete everything uh, before each test most of the time there are some some cases where i don't have to do it but it's a really red flag to reuse dev or production environment for testing and as I said, I have some assisting tools for static analysis. Uh, so you may know a tool like uh, SonarCube, I think is the number one, but for JavaScript, it's ESLint. Uh, you only have to download npm package ESLint, configure it really simply, or use presets like Airbnb or Google or even React. And then you add uh, editor config configuration. Uh, it's a really nice thing. I like uh, that it uh, keeps me unaware of indentation. It uh, always creates, well, when you create new file, it will provide the indentation you have cho chosen. Uh, for example, I always use tabs of, of tabs of size two, and it will always add a new line to end the file as Git requires and so on. So it's a little automation tool that I like to use. Uh, when I'm coming to this automation slide, Imagine this part uh, that we already have uh, tested our code base. We have pushed first commit, and we will use other tools from now. No more coding, just setting up continuous integration. So first of all, I will talk a little bit about version control tools, then about CI CD test with contain. I will introduce you to, to some challenges I have encountered with Team City, and I will give you my different view on automation. So first of all, I think uh, all the all the developers have encountered once or uh, actually every day in their coding life uh, version control tools, especially Git and remote repositories like top three GitHub, Bitbucket, and GitLab. And I have included Docker Hub. Docker Hub is kind of version control. It's not a code repository tool. Uh, I think it should be included. I will elaborate on it a little bit more. Uh, so continuous integration and deployment tools with containers and TeamCity setting up. First of all, I have to integrate my TeamCity with version control system. Then I like to configure automated triggers so that every commit I push will trigger a build on TeamCity that will run my test. Uh, TeamCity has to set up a test environment using Docker. For me, it's the perfect case when I can, use, when I can reuse uh, my Docker Compose file for test on TeamCity. Then uh, it's a must when using TeamCity to run tests with special reporter. I will show you why. And uh, I like make TeamCity to respond to version control with test status. Basically, if everything passed, uh, TeamCity will provide a green light. And otherwise, it will show a, a red flag. And if I get a red flag, I will review tests uh, that failed if needed. Uh, this is a simple diagram. We have a bit bucket. We make a commit. Uh, Team City is tracking changes. When a commit is made, Team City contacts agent to do a build. Uh, agent then uh, check, checks out to repository and uh, and completes the build. And there is also a Jira part that helps you to track it. And Team City actually can publish commit status, build status to Jira as well as to the bucket. And this is a really nice usage of Mocha with TeamCity. We can see status of tests. We can filter them. 
uh, we have um, titles of each test and we can achieve this with special Mocha Team City reporter dependency that you can get through npm install. And now uh, the challenge, uh, I have this big image. Um, I will try to go really slow through this. I believe it's a difficult case. So first we have a host machine that runs Docker on it. Uh, I believe that the host machine was a CentOS 7 Linux and it ran uh, version 19 Docker on it. So first we have a Team City, Team City running on Docker. That host on the Docker has Team City running on it. Obviously, Team City needs agents. So we have another one Team City machine, Team City agent running on Docker as well. But as you remember, I said that I like to set up my test environment with Docker on Team City, meaning that Team City agent machine that is running on Docker should access Docker. So I write a special Docker image where I'm using Team City agent from JetBrains as a base, and I'm installing with uh, uh, Linux uh, commands uh, Docker on it. I have a special image for that. I haven't published it, it yet to Docker Hub, and I'm planning, and that's the part of why, um, why I consider Docker Hub a version control system. And how to achieve this all together, how to connect it, Team City Agents Docker is connected to host Docker socket with this one, meaning that Team City's agent on builds can not only create resources like Mongo or Redis, but can kill itself as well with simple docker rm command. So Team City can, uh, so it's a, a big red flag. You have to avoid it. You have to be sure to not write things like that. And my a little bit of different view on automation. Uh, most of the time I hear that people consider automation only running tests and especially only running regression tests somehow but I don't agree with them. I think that we should consider automation, any Python, Bash, Node scripts that make our life easier or also Ansible and Terraform tools uh, should be considered as automation tools as well. Cron jobs that help you to, I don't know, send email every day or something like that, automation as well. Continuous integration, continuous deployment, logging alerts. I used to work with Elasticstack and instead of pinging myself and checking if there are no errors, I made a Slack bot that would retrieve an information for me and ping me. So that's an automation in, in my point of view as well. And for me, that should be uh, uh, it from uh, the theoretical part. And let's go to demo. I will show you a GitHub repository. I will provide you this link, or I think Rimby this will. And you can find here this EXO front end and EXO back end. Basically, it's a simple tic tac toe game uh, repository. Front end is perfectly fine working, but uh, we are not interested in it today. Um, I will clone this. I will uh, copy this URL and I will write simple command git clone. Um, I will open up this in my terminal and let's see the file structure. Uh, the three most interesting directories for us is Suretsu, test, and Docker. Uh, so Suretsu contains all the JavaScript and TypeScript files, the code base actual test contains the test files. And let's start with Docker directory. It contains this Docker compose tests uh, file uh, that will help me to launch my testing environment. It's just a Mongo container, Mongo image that exposes 17017 port to host machine. So let me show you that nothing is running on my Docker host. And I will write Docker, Docker compose minus F, Docker compose test uh, up minus D. I run this and Docker PS, we have running Mongo container on my machine. <clears throat> Let's get back. Also, we have to install all the dependencies from uh, packages on file. You can do this with simple npm install command. Um, 
don't mind these errors. It's just my Mac complaining, so I'll clear the screen. Uh, I will open previously mentioned package JSON file. We can see the dependencies, development dependencies, and we have scripts, scripts object, and the three scripts we are going to talk about today are test, test dev, and coverage. So test script uh, runs all the tests once. Test dev script uh, runs it in a watch mode, meaning that on every file save, it will rerun scripts. And coverage uh, provides me coverage. So look at this, I simply run npm run coverage. And this will be the first time my test will be ran. Okay, 25 tests passing. Let me open this uh, with a finder, coverage directory. Um, give me a second. Newly created coverage directory. Uh, you should be seeing it right now. I don't know, can you see it? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, there are static JavaScript uh, and HTML files, and this index HTML provides us coverage. The most interesting for us is this search sort of route. Uh, here are all my API endpoints. We have this events file. It's completely covered. We have 100% coverage of statement branches and functions. And then we open this game TypeScript file, and we can see that we lack some functionality coverage. And we have one endpoint that we are going to cover today together. Um, so let's start doing it. I will open my code base with Visual Studio Code Editor. And I will quickly walk you through how I prepare my test environment from code side. So first of all, I have this util TypeScript file that is responsible for all the mocking and cleaning database after every test. Um, there are some lifespan hooks uh, after each test. It uh, uh, removes connection from Mongoose, from Mongo. It closes it. Uh, this file import allows me to connect to database. Uh, this before hook uh, mocks all the functions uh, that uh, console and logger provides, and this unmocks it back after all the tests are run. And we have this create TypeScript file functions that interest us uh, MID. This just creates a random uh, mongoose valid ID that I use for mocking as well. And we have uh, create game DTO, create game, create event DTO, and create event. So functions that end with DTO simply creates a data transfer JSON object, plain JSON object. And create game function without this DTO extension uh, actually inserts provided object to database. Um, I will open up game test i will walk you through all the scribe blocks i will open up as well actual game endpoints and the terminal uh, right now i will run test in dev development mode and you can see the test ran and i will click save and the test rerun again so we we have api games I will test APA games router. Before each test, uh, we will clear testing data. We have uh, four endpoints covered, API games, API games uh, get ID events, post API games that creates new game, and post API games uh, to make a uh, game by the CD status finished. Uh, let's add one more. Oh. Sorry about that. Uh, let's add one more and call this delete API games ID and function. Okay, we have our describe log. And let me show you one more nice feature of Mocha only block. You see, we have 25 testing pass, passing, and when I add this only block, we have 15. So Mocha knows to only run this uh, block. Let's open some actual test cases. We have a couple it test cases. And first of them is for get API games by ID. It says should throw not found when no documents are in database. It's actually a valid case for uh, this uh, delete endpoint as it firstly tries to retrieve a document from database and only then remove. So if it's not found, it should throw an error. Let me simply copy this. 
uh, change uh, method from get to delete. And we had 15 tests passing, now we have 16. I will move that only block on here. We have one test passing. Next up, uh, should throw not found when no game is found by given ID. How it differs from the first one? Now we insert something in database, but it still should throw not found since a random ID is provided. So let me copy this as well. Uh, good, change this to delete, rerun. We have two test pass. Third test is should throw validation error. Well, I don't see anything related to validation here. So let me try to actually write a test case uh, from zero by myself. So it should remove document from database when, uh, I'm sorry, it's matched by provided ID. I will provide an async function as a callback right here. And first of all, const game, I will assign the very same statement uh, return value to this variable. I will copy this code. And instead of random ID, I will provide this game's ID. Simple as that. And now we should expect 204 status instead of 404 and message not found. And it should work. I would like to make another assertion. Uh, I will call it count. I will count all games in database that has this ID. If my test passed and worked, meaning it's removed uh, the document from database, documents count should be zero. <clears throat> so let me simply provide query ID by game ID, and I will assert that count is equal to zero. Pretty reasonable to me. <clears throat> let me run this once again. We have three test passing, simple as that. I will remove those only blocks. I rerun all the tests. Uh, now I'm getting back to coverage. We had this completely uncovered. Let me run npm run coverage command. We had 28 passing tests. I will hit refresh and we can see that everything is covered nicely 100%. We have complete coverage of all my API endpoints and that's kind of it. I just have one more bonus point. Uh, NPM run test, minus minus, minus minus, provide, provide some custom reported. As I mentioned before, we have um, Team City reported and we have Niang Cat reporter. And we have Rainbow now. So that's pretty much it from my side. I just want you to provide a link. It's how you can reach me out. So you can reach me out on LinkedIn, on Gmail, on GitHub, and on Medium. I have uh, published one story yesterday, my first one about Node.js. So if you will open this, you will find it. And that would be it for me. Any questions? Thank you, Ludas. It was really great to listen to you and watch uh, your code. Um, there are a few questions for you. So the first one is from Alize. Okay. Uh, why do you write integration tests instead of unit tests? Okay, uh, good question. Uh, I actually write unit tests as well. As a previous speaker, Arunas mentioned that they are extremely fast and I agree with him, but I prefer integration tests for API endpoints because I believe they cover more and when providing actual database connection, actual mocking, actual populating database instead of mocking it, I think we have a better return value than unit tests. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question is from Lioness. Do you work with front end component tests as well? Uh, yeah, I have a history on it. I have worked with uh, Enzyme, with React test utilities, and so on, basically only for React. I have worked with Jest, and there I developed my hate towards Jest. I know it's also fast, I know it provides a lot of stuff. I don't like it, uh, but, but um, front-end tests also have a great return value, I believe it. 
just like the API integration test, in my opinion. But what I like more is to cover all the user experience with end-to-end -end tests, and I like uh, tools like Cypress or uh, CodeSetJS. Thank you, Ludas. Uh, we have another question for you. So do you use this testing in your current company? And if not, why? Question from Mantas. I'm not using this testing in my current company. And the reason why would be because now I'm a front-end developer and I'm working more with unit tests, as I have mentioned before. And if uh, I would uh, go back to Node.js coding, if I would write the Web Services API, I surely would uh, write such tests with uh, Mocha. OK, thank you. Um, another question from Osha. Uh, after you share the code, will it work keeping in mind that it calls API? Is it a public API? Uh, it's uh, that API is written in my code base that I'm sharing. It's uh, self-implemented Express Web Server. Yes, it will work. As you have seen, I have uh, installed it from zero and cloned from zero on my machine during this presentation. Okay, good to know. Uh, so we'll definitely try. And uh, the next, uh, the last question uh, from Diana. Uh, yes. What about GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab pipelines instead of using TeamCity? OK, uh, that's a good point. Um, I started using them. Actually, I have implemented one in my private GitHub repository. And it's a super cool way to implement your CI. Instead of having a separate server running TeamCity machine and TeamCity agent machine on it, GitHub provides basically everything you can actually turn uh, Mongo on it and so on. And it's real quick. Uh, the first time I did it, it took me like an hour. The second time, it took me five minutes. So even for small projects, uh, GitHub or Bitbucket pipelines are really cool things. 